Well, it's one of those unresolvable questions where it's like it's it's like the uh, Sorites paradox. You know, at what point do uh, do grains of sand become a pile? You know, uh, you, you, you can't just take any one or add any one before it becomes a pile of sand. It, it, it's a it's a collective thing and there's a, a varying degrees uh, before it gets there. And, you know, there's people who do in academics who study cults and the question is always is still unresolved. What is a cult? So they usually come up with checklists and some checklists are more self-serving to people than others sometimes. And some checklists are uh, are important for uh, government benefits. Like we are recognized by the IRS as a 501c3 tax exempt church. Uh, and uh, so that that comes with its own set of of requirements, like the fact that we have regular services, which which we do. And uh, there's. I think even our after school clubs were considered part of the legitimacy of us being a religious organization, the iconography, the, the other, other such things, not, not, not totally clear anymore on what the IRS standards are. But in any case, everybody has their own kind of checklist. And I feel like, you know, the best of those, the best of these analyses that try to look at is a group of cults is a, uh, is is something art or whatever is just to uh take a look away from the the central subject itself and look at its relationship to other people you know are people treating this as art are you know uh, are, do people have a cultic relationship with this group you know and people can have cultic relationships with groups that aren't really uh trying to cultivate that kind of relationship and and but maybe that's the better way to look at it. And I think if you look at what people are doing in the Satanic Temple, it's difficult to take away the label of religion from them. You know, we do have services, we do have these communities, we do have people getting this iconography tattooed on them and other such things. And we have people engaging in rituals even though they don't believe in the supernatural and that sometimes strikes people as odd i just point out weddings and funerals to them to kind of get them to think more clearly about what ritual can be in a non-theistic sense but in and, and that's all by the will of the group that's developed around this i mean you you made the comparison that then i become some kind of jesus character but in reality you know we just kind of set this the the basic framework down and it could have developed in many different ways we didn't mandate for our local congregations that they need to engage in rituals and things like that that turns out to be something people are very interested in doing and they do it so i i just want to make it clear that i'm not the really the author of all the social dynamics taking place here in some ways i'm watching it unfold as well and sometimes the direction it takes might disappoint me in other ways, I'm thrilled. Uh, but just the same, there's only so much I can do, especially when the core philosophy is one that uh, it has a, a certain disdain for autocracy.